Tuesday, December 14th, 1993, four employees were fatally injured, and the fifth employee was seriously injured in the Chuck E. Cheese's restaurant in Aurora, Colorado. The perpetrator, 19-year-old Nathan Dunlap, a former employee of the restaurant, was frustrated about being fired and sought revenge by committing the attack. He fled the scene of the shooting with stolen money and restaurant items. This is the incident that no one talks about that inspired the iconic game and movie, Five Nights at Freddy's. For the movie, a troubled security guard accepts a nighttime job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a once successful abandoned family entertainment center, where he discovers its four animatronic mascots, Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. They move and kill anyone that is still there after midnight, but the game differs just a little bit. This true story starts with Nathan Dunlap, born April 8, 1974. As a kid, he moved from Illinois to Tennessee, from Tennessee to Michigan, and finally ended up in Colorado. Dunlap's mother suffered from mental health issues, as did Dunlap himself, attempting to end his own life twice in middle school. Dunlap also committed crimes as a teenager where he ended up in a juvenile detention center. But in 1993, Dunlap had been arrested five times prior to being hired at Chuck E. Cheese in May of that year. Dunlap began working at the restaurant in May 1993 and was fired in July after a disagreement he had with his supervisor over his schedule hours. Acquaintances of Dunlap said he was frustrated over the firing and told a former co-worker that he planned to get even about the termination. Nathan Dunlap entered the restaurant at 9 p.m. where he ordered a ham and cheese sandwich and played an arcade game. He then hid in the restroom at about 9.50 p.m. He exited the restroom after closing at 10.05 p.m. and shot five employees. Dunlap first shot Sylvia Crowell, who was 19 at the time. She was cleaning the salad bar. She was hit at close range and was mortally wounded. Ben Grant was next, who was 17. He was fatally shot. He was vacuuming the floor. The next victim was Colleen O'Connor, who was 17 at the time. She got on her knees and pleaded for her life. She told Dunlap that she wouldn't tell anyone, but Dunlap proceeded to tell her that he had to do this, and he fatally shot. Next was Bobby Stevens. He's the lone survivor of the shooting. He returned to the restaurant after taking a smoke break outside, thinking the noise he heard from inside the restaurant were children popping balloons nearby. As Stevens walked into the restaurant and unloaded utensils into the dishwasher, Dunlap came through the kitchen door, raised a handgun at him, and fired a shot, which struck Stevens. Stevens fell to the floor and played dead. Dunlap then forced Marge Colbert, who was 50 at the time, the store manager, to unlock the safe. After he opened it, he fatally wounded her. As he was taking the cash out of the safe, Dunlap fired a second shot, just to make sure. The manager who fired Dunlap was not present at the restaurant. Stevens escaped through the back door and walked to the nearby Mill Pond apartment complex, where he pounded on the door to alert someone that he and others had been shot at the restaurant. 
Stevens was hospitalized at Denver General Hospital in fair condition. As authorities arrived at the scene, they found two bodies in the restaurant's hallway, a third in a room off the hallway, and the fourth in the manager's office. Crow was sent to Denver General Hospital, where she was declared brain dead. She died from her injuries the next day at Aurora Regional Medical Center. At this point, Dunlap fled the scene with $1,500 worth of cash and game tokens he stole from inside the restaurant. Dunlap then went to his girlfriend's house as if nothing happened. Police went to the apartment that he shared with his mother and they let his mother know that he was wanted for questioning because the police heard that he was there that night eating. Dunlap met the cops. The cops questioned him and they took his clothes as evidence. 12 hours later, the police returned and he was arrested. After that, Dunlap was sentenced to a death that was overturned. Until this day, Nathan Dunlap remains locked up in the Colorado State Penitentiary where he is serving life without parole. This happened to be the true story that no one talks about behind Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, what happened in this particular case, you know, the police were called just after 10 o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, or the only survivor, Bobby Stevens, was able to run to a neighbor's house and he was shot in the face. Yeah. Right, and he was able to, to run to a, a residence that was just to the east of the Chuck E. Cheese mm -hmm. and called the police. So the police came and they kind of split up. A number of police officers went to that location and a number of them also went to the Chuck E. Cheese. And there were paramedics that went to both Curly locations Marshall. too. When did you decide that you were going to rob the place? Probably about your uh, September, October. Did you know that you were going to kill whoever was in there? No. I got there around 9.20. About 9.20? Yeah. You know, I just noticed it. it was pretty slow, or, you know, there wasn't really nobody around and stuff. So I was like, well, you know, I could go ahead and do this, you know? And so I started looking, and I started thinking, well, all I can do is I gotta shoot these people. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll shoot. And so I started, you know, I was just, while I'm doing everything else, eating and playing video games, stuff, I'm just keeping an eye on people, find out who's there, who's gonna be working, who it is they gotta shoot and stuff. And, uh, They all had one thing in common, they didn't know me. And because I didn't, I didn't have no association with them, to me their life wasn't nothing, to me. To you they were like what? They, they, their life wasn't nothing. I saw the last couple at the counter, getting their little prizes and stuff. I went to the men's room. You go into the men's room and you look in the mirror. Right. And I was, I was still kind of iffy on it. And then, you know, I went ahead and kind of, like I said, hyped myself up. And, Came out and started shooting. When you were hyping yourself up, what were you doing? Just looking in the mirror like, are you really going to do this? And I'm like, yeah. I sort of like talked to myself. And so you got hyped up and you walked straight out? Walked straight out the bathroom. And shot Sylvia. And once that happened, it was all over. Does it bother you that they're dead, Nathan? No. Why? I guess because for me, death ain't nothing. I don't, I'm not afraid of death. And you didn't take the time to think that their life was so important to somebody else, right? So you walk out of the bathroom. You've decided what? See about to die. These people have to die. Are about to die. These people are about to die. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't see the salad bar. I didn't see, uh, see, I didn't hear the music. Uh, it was like a, just blackness, just empty at the salad bar. Did she see you? No. It was like she had a glow around her, so to speak. So you just held the gun up and fired but looked the other way? I knew where she looked. I knew where she was standing. I knew she didn't see me. And I, I mean, in my head, I so I could see the target, so to speak, and I placed the gun there, and I know 
after she got shot. When, when that first shot went off, everybody jumped, including me. And like I said, I mean, it happened so quick. Before Sylvia even hit the ground, because I heard her fall, I had already shot. What's his name? Ben, how far away from him were you? Probably closer. To, probably closer than we are down. I remember the sound went off. And, he, and when he jumped, I jumped because it scared me. I shot him. And it had spun him back the same way he was coming around. It spun him the other back around the same way. And that was the last thing I saw. I never saw him hit the ground or nothing. And it, then, you know, I was already turned around going toward uh, Colleen. Yeah, I, I don't understand why she sat there and watched. I was expecting her to run. But she didn't run. That's why I turned around so quick. But she didn't run. She stayed right there and just watched. And what happened if she had run? I was shot her. Did you ever ha have eye contact with Colleen? Oh, yeah. That's what brought me kind of down. Did Colleen say anything? She's like, no. She was like, she shook her hand like, no. But she did say no. Yeah, she said no. I said, she didn't, she didn't beg for her life or nothing like that. What if she had, Nathan? When she said no, she sort of begged, you know. She, she, you know, she sort of begged, and it pissed me off because it kind of like bought, people gonna say I don't have compassion, but I know I got compassion, and it bought this compassion. Now I'm like, you know, why are you doing this to me? You know, why are you trying to make me like you? You know, it's easy to shoot you when I don't like you. And it's like, you know, why are you trying to make me like you? Because she said no? When she said no, it's like she's kind of big, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you just sit here and watch me shoot two people. What do, you, what do you mean, no? Do you understand why she was looking for compassion? Oh, yeah, I totally understand. I agree with her and everything. Nathan, why? Why what? Why kill. did you kill him? There were witnesses who were crying. That's why. Did you have any feeling? I had no feelings at all. Excitement? No excitement, no nothing. But Colleen brought that back. Right. And what were you thinking at the time? I didn't have no choice. Why? Everybody always has a choice. Because she had seen me shoot two other people. It is going to be inconceivable to people who finally hear this that you didn't have any feelings about human life. I didn't have any feelings about human life until after I shot Colleen. And what did you feel? I felt like, how can I do this? And I was like, well, you started, you gotta keep on finishing. And when you thought, how could you do this? What did you think of yourself? I was just sad. I'm not explaining to you. I was just sad. But you kept going. Because I had to finish it. I had to finish. You fired, he ducked. Yeah. You hit him. Yeah. Did you think you killed him? No, I knew I didn't kill him. Why didn't you stop and shoot him again? I don't like blood. You don't like blood? No. I would have to, if I was to do that, I would have to sit there and watch him. Office. And Mars looked up and said, can I help you or something? And she saw the gun. And uh, that's when I heard Bobby get up and run out. Had her open up the safe, and I shot her. And Margaret was still alive. I didn't want her to suffer or nothing. That's why I shot her a second time. I didn't shoot her because she was going to identify me or something. I knew she was messed up already, and I didn't want her. She sounded like she was in pain. So that's why I shot her. Again. And you walked out of Chuck E. Jesus. Jogged, ran. He left, went to a friend's, and counted the money, then to his girlfriend's. Both places, he thought the same thing. It's hard to believe. Four people died. And basically, to me, their lives were only worth uh, three or four hundred dollars a piece. Those people, what would those words be? It was wrong. It was wrong? Yeah. 
shouldn't have killed him. I shouldn't have robbed him. I should have just left him alone. But he didn't do nothing to me. If you were to get out again, would you kill him? No. Not unless they stood away or something. If they was hurting me, I'd kill him, yeah. It would take no problem. Do you realize how cold that is? Yes. And what do you think of yourself as a result of it? I still have a problem with it. Would you describe yourself as a human being? Yeah. I'm breathing, I'm, my heart's pumping and everything. Do you have a soul? Do you have a conscience? Yeah, I have a soul, I have a conscience. But who cares what the people think about me? Should you have killed Sylvia? No, I shouldn't have. Should you have killed Ben? No. Should you have killed Colleen? I shouldn't have killed anybody. I shouldn't have robbed that place. The fact is, I did, though. Should anybody care about you? I really don't care if they do or not. Let me ask it this way. Why should anybody care about you? I don't care. You don't understand. I don't care about nobody. I don't care. I don't care about anybody watching this. I don't care. The only people I care about is my family and my friends. That's all I care about. I don't care about nobody else. Do you have nightmares about this? I, I did. What were the nightmares like? Just replay everything that happened. What should your penalty be? If you want to make me hurt, life in jail. But still, I'll figure out how to make that better for me. Why not death? I ain't afraid of death. Death ain't gonna bother me. Life in prison because? I gotta sit here and basically rot to death. What happens when you you say that you believe in life ever after, you believe in heaven, that you believe you'll go to heaven? What happens when you see Sylvia and Ben and Colleen and Mrs. Colbert in heaven? Hopefully they'll forgive me. But I gotta keep going on. If they don't, I gotta keep going on. I'm not gonna let them bring me down. In heaven? Wherever, wherever I meet anybody at, as anybody, somebody wants to, you know, I want to apologize and stuff, but that, I can't do nothing about it. That's all I can do. Nathan Dunlap believes the death penalty is used more out of hate and revenge than anything else. If you want to kill me so bad, then come do it. That's my attitude. Isn't that kind of a macho, bravado type thing? It ain't macho to me or nothing, but I'm not saying it's macho or nothing, but... The fact is, I killed four people. I was to kill the fifth. I want them dead, and they're dead. Come kill me, man. If you think you, if you think you take my life, come do it. Thank you.